Come on into the library. It's a place where I love to be. Look in a book, here's a story for you. Who makes stories when the day is through? Who makes stories when the day is through? Story makers, story makers. Working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers. Stories are fabulous, stories are fun. Milton Wordsworth. Jenny and Jackson. Working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers. Stories are fabulous, stories are fun. Come on, be a story maker. Story makers. Midnight. Hello. Has everybody gone? The sun is down, the stars are bright. Story makers come out at night. Milton Wordsworth, story maker and magical maestro, at your service. We have lots of stories to finish before daybreak. Would you like to be a story maker too? These are my associates, Jelly and Jackson. <laughs> Hello. Who wants to help us make stories? Oh, oh do help. Yes, yes. Oh, Milton, Milton, the children in the library today were talking about the park and I was listening. <laughs> <gasps> a park. I would love to go to a park. Oh, yes, Jelly, the park. Mm. Oh, trees, fountains, games on the grass, beds of flowers, perhaps a cafe. Oh, they said there were swings. <gasps> Oh, yes, of course. A park would have those, too. Well, and I was wondering if we could make a story about a park. A park story? Yes. Yes, that's excellent. OK, come on. Come on. A park story with a swing in it. I think this will do. Ooh. Now we require the secret ingredient to make the machine work. Do you know what it is? Imagination. imagination. That's right, imagination. That's when you see things in your mind and you make them come to life. Mm. So put your hands up like this and imagine our park story coming to life. Imagine, 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 imagine a story. Yes, it is. And it's called Ruby in the Park. Let's go to the park, Mum. Let's go to the park. We can picnic underneath the trees and share our bread with the coots and the geese and the pigeons and the crows who all fly down to say hello. Let's go to the park, Mum. Let's go to the park. There are soaring swings and slides. There's a giddy roundabout too. I'll slide and I'll slide and I'll slide so many times that my belly will feel full of butterflies. Let's go to the park, Mum, let's go to the park. We can walk amongst the pretty flowers, touch and smell them for many hours. Let's go to the park, Mum, let's go to the park. When we feel lazy and hot, we can go to the paddling pool to cool off. There amongst the bathing bodies, bright as ice lollies in their swimming cozies, we can splash the rest of the day away. Splish, splash, splish, splash. <laughs> oh, Milton, do you know what I liked best in that story? No, what? I liked the slide. I'd love to go on one of those. They're stupendous, especially the really high ones. Your tummy rolls and your eyes pop when you come down at great speed. Really? Well, that's what usually happens to me. Oh, look, look, look. The children drew lots of park pictures today. Oh, I like that big slide. It's very good. Oh, can we put one of the pictures in the story machine? I'm sure the children would like a park story. But we've just had a park story. Well, this can be a different one, can't it, Milton? Very true, Jackson. Parks have lots of stories. 
one slide for a park story. And the other ingredient we need is imagination. Are you ready to help with the magic words? Imagine, imagine, imagine a story. It's a blue cow story. Blue cow in the playground. In a field not far away is a herd of cows grazing quietly. One of the cows is most unusual. Blue cow wonders, wonders about the big world beyond her field. One day, blue cow was looking at the lush green field. I wonder what it would be like to be in a field with things to play on. She's off again, said the other cows. So blue cow caught the bus that stops beside her field. I'd like a return ticket to a field with things to play on, please. There you go, madam. Hold very tight. And they set off for a park. And then they arrived. There was a park in front of her with red swings, a green seesaw and a big blue slide. Blue Cow walked over to the swings where three children were swinging higher and higher into the air. I'd like to try that, she thought. So she tried to sit on the swing, but Blue Cow was too big and she couldn't get her bottom on the seat. You're too big to go on the swings, said a little boy who was sitting next to her. Do you want to come on the seesaw with me? My name's Joel. My name's Blue Cow. I'd love to. But when Blue Cow sat down on the seesaw, she was too heavy to balance with Joel. I know. Let me get some of my friends. Kate, William, can you help me balance with Blue Cow? Kate and William climbed up the seesaw, but still Blue Cow was far too heavy. I know. Let's try the slide, said Joel. Joel slid down the slide. Whee! Followed by Kate. Whee! And then William. Whee! But where was Blue Cow? Help! She said. She was stuck at the top of the slide. I'm too big. I'm wedged in. So the children climbed the steps and pushed and pushed until... Oh! Blue Cow slid down the slide and landed in a heap at the bottom. Wow! That was fun, but I don't think I'll try it again, she said. There isn't anything else for us all to play on, said Joel. Yes, there is. Come on, everyone. <laughs> Jump on my back and they went for a wonderful ride around the park. Hooray for Blue Cow, they cried. Come back and play with us again. I will, said Blue Cow. You'll never guess where I've been. Where have you been? I've been to play in the park. Everyone knows cows can't go to a park. But we know they can, don't we? Yes, we do know. Yes. yes. Mm. Mm. Yeah, now just one more book. Finished. <laughs> what is it? It's a slide, of course. Oh, mm. well, where do you slide? Uh, there. This is the down bit, mm. and this is the up, 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 up bit. Oh, oh, mm. Jackson, can I have a go? Oh, no, Jelly, it's for my toy cars. Oh, uh, okay. Let's get my yellow car. Mm. Uh, up it comes. Up, 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 and along, and... There it goes. <laughs> oh, do it again, do it again. Oh, right. uh, my police car goes mm -hmm. up, 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 and wait and down. Oh, <laughs> wow. Should we make a story? Oh, yes. What do we put in the machine? Your slide. Uh, I think it will not fit. Oh, I know. We could use one of my hair slides. It sounds the same. Hmm. hmm. Okay. Come on. All right. Now we have to say the magic words. Mm. Ready? Yes. Imagine, 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 imagine a story. It's a Smith and Word story. And it's called Sniff and Wag in the Park. <laughs> 
Sniff and Wag are friends. When the day ends and the sky grows dark, they sneak into the park through a hole in the fence. They like to play around their favourite tree. You're it, Sniff, says Wag. You can't catch me. Then they slip into the flower garden for hide and seek. Wag counts. One, two, three, four. Coming! Ready or not? Sniff has found the perfect spot. They clamber up the hill and bound around, chasing their tails. Until, without fail, they reach the playground. They zoom down the slide, feet first. Tail first. They slide all the way to Jupiter, where the dogs have glittery fur. Hello, says Sniff. We'd like to know if this is the place where the bone trees grow. Yes, it is. Do come and eat, says Jupiter Dog. And off he floats without using his feet. They feast on Jupiter's very best food. It tastes strange to sniff and wag, but they decide not to be rude. Uh, uh de delicious, says Wag, but now we really must go. Our slide is waiting for us. It's all alone. Off they leap into the dark and then land back in their very own park. Wow, how grand, barks Sniff. Fancy flying so far from land. Good night. Sleep tight, my little friends. Tomorrow we will play again. Look, here's the first ray of the dawn. Huh? All story makers must be hidden away by the time the sun comes up. Mm. The children will be here soon. Yes. Very true, oh pink one. The dawn is upon us. The morning is nigh. We've made our stories and we bid you goodbye. Bye, story makers. See you again soon. Stories of fabulous stories of fun. Milton Wordsworth. Jelly and Jackson. 
Working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers, stories are fabulous, stories are fun. Come on, be a story maker. Story makers. Midnight. Hello. Has everybody gone? The sun is down, the stars are bright. Story makers come out at night. Milton Wordsworth, story maker and magical maestro, at your service. One, two, a brush for you. Three, four, there's some more. Five, six, brushes on sticks. Seven, eight... Uh, Jackson! What? What are you doing? I'm the painting monitor. Hmm. What's hmm. that? Oh, it means I have to look after the painting area and keep it tidy. Oh, can I be painting monitor too? Oh, no, 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 Jelly. There can only be one painting monitor. Hmm. Oh. Oh, okay. I'll just have a look at these pictures over here. Oh, this is a nice doggy. Oh, no, you can't look at those. I've tidied them away. Oh, um, I just wanted to have a look. Well, you can't. I can! Can't! 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 Oh, can't. Let can't. me see this picture. Mm. Perfect. Um, but I wanted to have that picture. Mm, so did I. No, I did. I did. A fine hound. Perfect for a story. Now, are you ready to help me make a story? <laughs> Remember the magic words. Imagine, imagine, imagine a story. It's a playbook. And the story's called Our Dog. In the front room, ready to go, waiting for her walk. Our dog, Abigail. Out of the door, leaving the house, pulling me along. Down on the path, trotting along. Next to the river, Looking around, having a wash, annoying the swans. <laughs> Careful, Abigail. Out in the park, running and jumping and fetching a stick. On the way home, mouth open wide, tongue hanging out, back in the garden, playing some more with her favourite toy. Dinner is served, first drink some water. Then eat some nice food. Tickle her tummy and take her to bed. Chewing her toy, our dog Abigail. Oh, <laughs> Milton, it's very important that you look after your pets properly, isn't it? That's right, my little jelly bean. Mm. Uh, and you know that Jackson looks after the paints and things? Uh, yes, that's right. I'm the painting monitor. <laughs> and I was wondering if I could look after the things here. I could be the toy and the brick monitor. Oh, yes, indeed. It's very important that someone takes care of all these things. Yes, I'll be the best monitor in the whole world if I could just 
Work out how all these things fit together. Mm. Wait a minute. This piece of the jigsaw reminds me of an old story from a country called India. Oh, um, what story is that? I'll show you. Mm. Are you ready to join in with the magic words? Can you remember what they are? That's right. Imagine, imagine, imagine a story. It's a tale from far away, and it's called the Dobby Waller's Donkey. The Dobby Waller walked home after a long day washing clothes. He ignored his dog and his donkey who were tied up outside his hut and went inside to eat a huge dinner. He ate until he could eat no more and fell asleep at the table. The dog and the donkey were very hungry. Their tummies hurt because they were so empty. Now they would have nothing to eat until the morning. They fell asleep dreaming about food they would never eat. When all was quiet, apart from the snoring of the greedy Dobiwala, a thief crept past the dog and the donkey and slipped into the Dobiwala's hut. After he had taken all he could carry, the thief slipped out of the hut again and crept past the dog and the donkey once more. The bag he was carrying was very heavy, so he set it down and rested for a minute. The donkey awoke. Look, a thief is carrying off our master's goods. Bark, dog. Wait, master. The dog, who was half asleep, said, Why should I? He neglects us so badly, he deserves a fright. He should look after us a bit more. How can you let the master down, you ungrateful animal? Huh, said the dog. You think I should be grateful for being neglected? Then I must wake him myself, said the donkey. I had better be quick. The donkey held his head back and brayed very loudly. Eeyaw! 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 The great noise made the thief jump. That silly creature will wake up the whole neighbourhood. Better get out of here. The doby waller awoke a second later. That stupid donkey, he's ruined my sleep. I'll teach him not to bray in the middle of the night. He was just about to strike the donkey with his stick when he noticed a thief running off into the distance. Off he dashed to try and catch him. On the table in the hut was the Doby Waller's half-eaten dinner. The dog and the donkey would not go hungry after all. Oh, the poor dog and the donkey. Mm, the master didn't look after them properly, did he? No, mm. not like I look after the paint. Mm, or I look after the bricks and the toys. Mm -hmm. Well, I must say you've both done a very good job. <laughs> and you deserve a treat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's that? Oh, that's candy floss. You get that at the fair, don't you, Milton? That's right. And I think that's where we should go for the next story. Woo! Yeah, the, the fair! fair the Great! Fair. <laughs> Ooh, a story about a fair. Are you ready with your imagination? Ready? Imagine! Imagine! Imagine, imagine, imagine a story! It's a blue cow story. Oh, I love blue cow. Blue cow and the roundabout horse. In a field not far away is a herd of cows grazing quietly. One of the cows is most unusual. Blue cow wonders, wonders about the big world beyond her field. One day, blue cow heard beautiful roundabout music on the breeze. I wonder what it would be like to be a horse on a carousel. 
She's off again, said the other cows. So Blue Cow caught the bus that stops beside her field. I'd like a ticket to a roundabout, please. There you go, madam. Hold very tight. And they set off for the fair. And then they arrived. When Blue Cow got off the bus, she could hardly believe her eyes. Hello, glad you could come. A jolly looking carousel horse with the name Bob painted on its side leapt down from the carousel. Come on, Blue Cow, I'll show you around. Would you like a ride on the spinning teacups? Bob said. Ooh, yes, please, giggled Blue Cow. The next thing she knew, she was spinning in a beautiful cup. When it stopped, she felt quite giddy. Next came the House of Fun, with its crazy mirrors that made Blue Cow look very funny. Ooh, look at my long neck, she grinned. I look like a blue giraffe. <laughs> no, what would you like to do now? asked Bob kindly. Well, Blue Cow thought for a moment. I would really like to be a carousel cow. No problem, Bob smiled. Blue Cow stood proudly on the carousel next to Bob. Oh, please can I have a ride on the Blue Cow, Mum? Asked a girl called Rosie. And on she jumped. The music started and the carousel twirled. Slowly at first and then faster. Hooray, cheered Rosie. Moo, cheered Blue Cow. And they both had the most wonderful carousel ride ever. You'll never guess where I've been. Where have you been? I've been to the fair and I was a carousel cow. Everyone knows cows can't go to the fair. But we know they can, don't we? <laughs> uh, yes, we do know, don't we? Mm. She could do anything if she imagined hard enough. Yes. <laughs> but look. Oh, <gasps> it's nearly morning. Mm. The children will soon be here. Indeed. The dawn is upon us. The morning is nigh. We've made our stories and we bid you goodbye. goodbye. <laughs> story makers, story makers, working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers, stories are fabulous. Stories oh, are fun. Bye, story makers. <laughs> See you again soon. One and all, 
Milton Wordsworth, story maker and magical maestro, at your service. Hello, Jackson. Oh, hello, Jelly. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, well, the librarian stuck up all these pictures that the children drew. There's one of a boat, oh. and a snail, mm -hmm. and a triangle, mm -hmm. and a bus. Mm. Oh. And I'm trying to work out why they drew them. Oh, because they wanted to. Mm. But why are they all different? Why aren't they of the same thing like they usually do? Mm. Oh, uh, I know. Because they are all places where people live. Mm. Oh, let's have a look. Mm. Uh, the boat. Mm. Yeah. It could be a houseboat. Yes, it is on the canal. Right. Mm. And then... The snail? Oh, yes, yeah. the snail carries its home on its back. It yes. is its shell. Mm. Well, no one lives in a triangle. No. And no one lives on a bus. No. Mm. no, no. It's a uh, mystery. Uh, I've got an idea. What? Why don't we use one of them to make a story? Mm. As if anyone would live in a bus. <laughs> Jelly, you are silly. Well, you never know. Jackson, hmm. will you join in with the magic words? Oh, Ready? go on then. Imagine, 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 imagine a story. <gasps> Look, it's a playbook. Oh, and it's called Laura Lives on a Bus. Ooh, well, I never. Some people live in houses. Some people live in flats. But Laura lives on a bus. And Molly lives on a coach. Laura's bus is a big blue bus. Laura lives in the bus with her mum and her dad and her brother and a big dog called Dizzy. Molly's coach stands next to Laura's bus. Molly lives in the coach with her mum. Laura and Molly are best friends. In the morning, Laura wakes up on her bus. Her bed is up on the top floor, the top floor of the bus. And Molly wakes up in her coach. She sleeps downstairs because there isn't an upstairs on a coach. Laura goes downstairs for her morning wash. But there are no taps in the bus because there are no water pipes to bring water in. In Molly's coach, she is having a wash too. Her mum has warmed some water on their stove. Today is Saturday, so there's no school. Molly comes round to play with Laura. They do lots of things on a Saturday. They take Dizzy the dog for a walk. And they have great fun swinging in the trees. And they even plant a new tree for the woods. And then it's time to watch television. The television needs electricity to make it work, but there are no wires to bring electricity into Laura's bus, so she has a special windmill that makes electricity instead. The electricity from the windmill makes the television work. We love living in our bus and our coach. It's much more fun than a house. Yes? Uh, I know that snails can live in their shells and people can live in boats and in buses, but I didn't know people could live in those triangles. <laughs> this is not a triangle. Oh. Well, actually it is, sort of. Oh. It's called a tent. Oh, D don't tell Jackson that I didn't know. Mm. <laughs> what are those, those tents like? Well, let's see, shall we? Mm. Wow! Who lives in tents? Ah, oh, well, Jelly, my dearest, people usually live in tents on their holidays. Mm -hmm. It's called camping. Oh, but it's a bit 
wobbly, it might blow away. Ah, you see? Hmm? You pop these tent pegs into the ground to hold it firmly. Oh, well, can we have a story about camping? I thought you'd never ask. Hmm. Now for a story about camping. And the special ingredient? Yes, imagination. Imagine, imagine, imagine a story! It's a blue cow story. Excellent. And it's called Blue Cow Goes Camping. In a field not far away is a herd of cows grazing quietly. One of the cows is most unusual. Blue Cow wonders, wonders about the big world beyond her field. One day, Blue Cow was looking at the rain clouds in the sky. I wonder what it would be like to live in a field but not get wet when it rains. She's off again, said the other cows. So Blue Cow caught the bus that stops beside her field. I'd like a return ticket to a field where I won't get wet when it rains, please. There you go, madam. Hold very tight. And they set off for a campsite. When Blue Cow got off the bus, she could hardly believe her eyes. She was in a field dotted with tents of different colours. Hello, said a brown dog coming out of a small green tent. He was wearing a blue woolly bobble hat. I'm Eric. Do you want to put your tent in our field? I haven't got a tent. I've never been camping before. Oh, you'll need these then. He gave her a small pink tent, some pegs to tie the tent to the ground, and a pink woolly bobble hat. Thank you, said Blue Cow as she put the bobble hat on. Then they put the tent up next to Eric's. It was quite tricky, but finally they put the last peg in the ground. Oh, what a wonderful pink tent, said Blue Cow, and it matches my bobble hat. I think it's going to rain, said Eric. We'd better get inside our tents. When Blue Cow tried to get into her tent, she realised it was a little small for her. She could either get her bottom in, but then her head would stick out, or her head in, but then her bottom would stick out. Oh dear, said Blue Cow. Looks like I'm going to get wet after all. Help, shouted Eric. My tent is blowing away. Blue Cow jumped up to help. Out popped the tent pegs, but the tent was so small that it stuck to Blue Cow like a pink overcoat. Blue Cow and Eric chased the tent around and around the field as it flapped about like a green kite. Got it, she cried as she grabbed hold of one of the tent ropes. Hooray, said Eric. Thank you, Blue Cow. Let me help you out of your tent. And Eric pulled the tent as Blue Cow wriggled and wriggled to get herself free. Oh, thank you. It was fun going camping, said Blue Cow. Perhaps I should try a bigger tent next time. You'll never guess where I've been. Where have you been? I've been to a field and stayed in a tent. I went camping. Everyone knows cows can't go camping. But we know they can, don't we? Our tent is better than blue cows, isn't it? Mm. Mm. But, but I would like a pink tent too. I'd like to live in a tent. Mm. Mm. Um, Jelly, uh, I'm sorry that I said that people don't live in buses. Oh. I've never met anyone that lived in a bus before. Oh, that's okay, Jackson. It, it was just a guess because of mm. the snail and the boat. Oh. Mm. Mm. Friends again? Oh, yes, yes, friends again. Oh. Mm. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, can we have another camping story? Oh, oh. tents are brilliant. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, we can use that picture. Oh, um, oh, yes. The, yes, the children drew of the tent. We can put it in the story machine. Oh, right. Mm. Mm. Right. Now, let's think hard about camping. Yeah. Imagine, 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 imagine a story. story. Treacle Cat Story. Yes, and it's called Camping Chaos. Mm. Jack Sprat and Treacle Cat lived in a bin. A bin that people drop rubbish in. While Treacle dreams, Jack Sprat schemes. What will Jack Sprat make today? 
Ah, oh yeah, just what I like, a nice bit of fresh air. Here, Treacle, what about spending a night sleeping under the stars? <gasps> sleeping under the stars? What are you on about, Jack? Camping, you know, under canvas, out in the open, have tent wheel travel. Hey, hey, I don't know why I didn't think about it before. Yes, well, if I were you, I'd think about getting back inside this bin. I can hear one of those humans coming. <laughs> Whoa, I better hop it then. Just think, I could make myself a proper little campsite up here. Tent camp fire the works. Oh no, I can smell another of your mad schemes coming on. <laughs> Take a look at this, mate. It's a bit of old rag and a bag, Jack. Ah, you've got no imagination, Treacle. Just needs a bit of string and a few pegs and it'll be like home from home. Yeah, just you wait. Tonight, I'm going to be camping in comfort. Ah, now. Camping in comfort. <laughs> dib, dib, Treacle. You're just in time. What do you think? Brilliant, eh? Uh, yes, yes. What is it? Oh, very funny, Treacle. I'll tell you what it is. It's tentastic, that's what. Oh. And here, take a look at this sleeping bag. Oh. This will keep the cold out and stop me from freezing. <laughs> oh, dear. How awful. A rotting bread bag. You smell revolting after a night in that. Oh, you big sour puss. Right then, time to test me tent out. Well, well, well hang on a minute, Jack. It, it, it looks a little bit wobbly to me. Wobbly? Don't know what you're on about. It's safe as houses. Oh, OK. Oh, oh, I must have got me tent pegs in a tangle. You've got more than your tent pegs in a tangle. Stop pussyfooting around, Treacle, and get me out of this mess. Yes. <laughs> it is a mess. A perfect mess. <laughs> it seems to be quite difficult to go camping outdoors. <laughs> All that weather. I, I like camping indoors. Mm. Mm. But sadly, look. <gasps> oh, it's time to go already. Mm. Um, but can we go camping again sometime? Of course. I might even cook us some sausages. <laughs> but now, the dawn is upon us. The morning is high. We've made our stories, and we bid you goodbye. Bye. Bye. Story makers, story makers, stories are fabulous. Thanks for helping. Bye, story makers. <laughs> See you again soon. is down, the stars are bright. Story makers come out at night. Milton Wordsworth, story maker and magical maestro, at your service. There, finished, wonderful. Ooh. Uh, 
What is it, Jelly? Oh, it's a splatter painting. Mm. Mm. And it's called... Milton! <gasps> oh, 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 Milton! Yes, Milton. my spiky pink-haired friend. I can't friend. see anything. Oh. That's because we've suffered a power cut. Oh. 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 Now no one can see my painting. Oh. Yes, it's much too dark for that. I might be able to provide some illumination. <gasps> oh. 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 Oh, these torches are great for a power cut. Oh, and look. They make me look really spooky. <laughs> and you can make fabulous shapes on the wall. Look. Oh, oh, oh. And you can see my, my painting. Oh, Milton, Milton, why don't we put one of the torches in the story machine and make a story about shapes or shadows? <laughs> Good idea. May I borrow your torch, Jelly? Oh, oh yes, yes. Good. <laughs> and then you can see my painting. Well, at least the story machine's working. Now, all we need is a special ingredient to make the story come alive. You know what it is, don't you? Yes, imagination. Come on, imagine, imagine, imagine a story! Oh, look, Milton, it's a blue cow story! That's right, blue cow and the shadow. In a field not far away is a herd of cows grazing quietly. One of the cows is most unusual. Blue Cow wonders, wonders about the big world beyond her field. One day, Blue Cow was looking at the other cows in the field. I wonder what it's like to be all of my own. She's off again, said the other cows. So Blue Cow caught the bus that stops beside her field. I'd like a return ticket to a place where I can be on my own, please. There you go, madam. Oh, very tight. And they set off for the top of a hill. <laughs> and then they arrived. There was absolutely no one around. There weren't even any birds in the sky. Oh, this is so peaceful, she said, sitting down to enjoy the view. Oh. There on the ground was a big black shape. It had two horns and four legs, just like Blue Cow. Hello, I'm Blue Cow, she said, but the shape didn't answer. She tried waving. The shape waved back at her. Do you want to play? She said. I know. Let's have a race. Nod your head like this if you want to, she said, nodding her head. The shape nodded back at her. OK. Ready? Steady? Go! shouted Blue Cow, and she and the shape raced down the hill. It was strange, but they both finished at exactly the same time. That was fun. Shall we sit down? And she rested underneath a tree. But when Blue Cow looked around, the shape had disappeared. I wonder where it's gone, she thought. She stepped back into the sunshine to look for it. Oh, there you are, she said. Let's sit in the shade. But as soon as Blue Cow walked out of the sunshine, the shape disappeared again. Suddenly Blue Cow had an idea. She walked into the sunshine and stood on one leg. And the shape did too. She did a handstand and so did the shape. She lay on her back with her feet in the air and guess what? So did the shape. Of course, thought Blue Cow. I've been playing with Miss Shadow all day long. <laughs> well, that was most illuminating. <laughs> can you see my picture now? Oh, Jelly, it's still dark. Indeed. But I have an interesting idea. Take a handful of darkness. Pardon? Uh, would you please assist me in this endeavour? Take a handful of darkness. Come on. You better do as he says, Jelly. Okay. Um, and put it into the machine. Put it into the machine. Oh, Milton, it's not doing anything. Patience, my dear girl. Are you ready? Imagine, 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 imagine a story. What's it going to be? Oh, it's a Kevin the Spaceman story. And how appropriate. It's called The Dark Side. 
Kevin and Spanner in space to explore, seeking out planets never heard of before. It was the middle of the night when the rocket landed. Ooh, uh, said Kevin. I can't see where I'm going. Ruff, ruff, agreed Spanner. I wish there were some lights here, said Kevin. As if someone had heard him, two rows of lights suddenly lit up a pathway. Thank you, said an astonished Kevin. That's all right, twinkled the lights. Kevin and Spanner set off along the path. It was much better now they could see where they were going. Is anyone out there? called Kevin, peering into the gloom. Ruff! barked Spanner doubtfully. I'm here, sparkled a voice. Hello! Hello! called Kevin. Where are you? There was a twinkling sound and a sparkling star floated down from the sky. Welcome to the dark side, said the star. Kevin gulped. Uh, how do you do? he said politely. Um, the dark side of what? The moon, of course, shimmered the star. Come on, I'll show you. Follow me. I'm very sorry, said Kevin. We'd love to come with you, but we can't fly. Woof, agreed Spanner. Who ever heard of a flying dog? That was plain silly. Of course you can fly, called the star. All you have to do is shout space. Kevin and Spanner looked at each other. It was worth a try. Space! shouted the two friends together, and before they knew it, there they were with the twinkling star flying through space. Wow! shouted Kevin. This is great! Keep close to me! There's a satellite coming! called the star. The satellite whizzed past, narrowly missing Spanner. Pardon me! called the satellite. Spanner started barking furiously. Look, said the star, the light side, and he pointed down to the moon. Oh, yes, said Kevin. Below him, he could see the rough surface of the moon, just as he had always imagined it to be. Spanner looked down too. He couldn't see any bones, and he was beginning to get hungry. Time to go back, said the star. We don't want to get lost. Kevin agreed. They turned around and followed the star past planets and moons and landed back on the dark side. See you soon, said the star. Bye! The lights of the pathway turned back on. Good trip, they shimmered. Yes, thank you, said Kevin. Come on, Spanner, let's go back. I'm hungry! dark side of the moon, Milton. Verily there is, oh green and tiny one. Oh, oh, there is! Look, look, look! What's that, Jackson? Oh. Look, a dark moon! <gasps> <gasps> Hooray! Oh, magic! Mm. <laughs> Can you see my picture now, please, Milton? With the greatest of pleasure, my little jelly bean. Mm. ta -da. What is it? Well... I shall call it Bright Lights in a Power Cut. <gasps> How did you know what it was called? A perfect title. Might I be allowed to make a story from it? Uh, with your assistance, of course. There we are. Now we need a large helping of imagination. Ready? Imagine, imagine, imagine a story! Well done. You've made a playbook. And it's called The School Gates. Christopher loves going to school. Most children only go to school once in a day. But every day, Christopher goes to school twice. Once to take his elder sister Alexia to school in the morning and then once to pick her up in the afternoon. But Christopher only ever got as far as the gates. He never ever went inside, though he often wondered what it would be like. Then one day, Christopher and Mum went to school as usual, once in the morning and then again in the afternoon. All the children came running out, 
School is a very busy place. But where was Alexia? Mum thought Alexia must still be busy inside and thought that they should go and find her. Christopher was amazed. He was going inside. At last he might find out what school was really like. In the hall there were lots of pictures and pieces of writing on the walls. They were covered from floor to ceiling. It was so colourful. Well, she's not here, thought Mum, and Christopher was amazed. They went down the hall and there were lots of pegs and bags. Well, Alexia's coat is still here, thought Mum, and Christopher was astounded. Then they went into a big room. It was huge. Well, she's not here, thought Mum, and Christopher was amazed. Christopher thought Alexia must be lost. The school was so big. Finally, they found Alexia's classroom. And yes, there was Alexia. She was painting. Mum suddenly realised it was the after-school painting club. She had forgotten. Alexia's teacher saw them and asked if Christopher would like to join in while they waited for the club to finish. Christopher thought it was brilliant. He was painting in school. Amazing. So that's how Christopher went to school. Properly, for the first time. And he can't wait to go back again. Milton, <laughs> I've done another picture. Ooh, I feel another masterpiece coming on. I wonder what it'll be this time. There, there. Ooh, hmm. most interesting. Yes. It's just a white dot. It's not a white dot. It's a torch in the dark. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm. How apt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> look, look, it's getting late. Oh. Indeed it is. Hooray! <laughs> the dawn is upon us. The morning is nigh. We've made our stories and we bid you goodbye. Working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers. Stories are fabulous. Stories are fun. Bye, story makers. <laughs> See you again soon. is down the stars are bright story makers come out at night Milton Wordsworth story maker and a magical maestro at your service Milton Milton can we have a story about dancing please dancing mm. <laughs> why yes of course if that's what you want mm. what kind of dancing do you like jelly <laughs> mm. jelly likes belly <laughs> Gliding and jumping and twirling and whirling. Oh, what?
What sort of dancing do you like, Milton? Uh, oh, yes, let me see. Oh, I know. Tap dancing! Oh! Woohoo! That's fantastic! Yeah. <laughs> so, can we have a story about dancing Milton? Oh, that's an exceedingly good idea, Jackson. Oh. <laughs> this will do the trick. Come Yay. on. Now, come on, everybody, join in and help me with this story. Are you ready? Imagine. Imagine. Imagine a story. Oh, please let it be about ballet. <laughs> it's a playbook. <gasps> and the story's called Indian Dance Class. It's Saturday morning. That's when Priya goes to her Indian dance class. Priya loves her dancing so much that she gets up very early. Mummy helps her to put on her shalva kameez, which is an Indian dress. She also helps her tie the colourful dupatta, which is a long scarf. Finally, Priya puts on her sticky bindi very carefully. She has to put the bindi in the middle of her forehead, which is quite tricky. All her friends have bindis too. Priya's teacher is called Paliji. She asks the girls to put on their noisy dancing bells, called gungaroos. But Priya has left hers at home. She is upset because she's the only girl without gungaroos. Paliji tells Priya not to worry and to dance without them. Today, the class is going to learn some animal movements. These hand movements are called hastak, Paliji explains. They start with the bird. Then the deer. The snake. And the peacock. Priya tries hard to copy her teacher's movements. All of a sudden, someone appears at the door. It's Mummy! And guess what she's got? Priya's gungaroos. Mummy has saved the day. Now, Priya can dance just like everyone else. After all, Priya does want to be the best dancer in the world. Look what I found in the dressing up box. There was no dancing for me. Oh. Well, now, let's see. Oh. Here we are. Some music. Mm. Jelly, why don't you partner Jackson in a dance? Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Jackson, now will you join me in some ballet? Uh, no, I want to learn how to play this. <laughs> oh, but why don't you and I make another story? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, we could use my pink ribbon to to put in the machine. Good idea, Jelly Baby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know what to do. Can you remember the words? Imagine, imagine, imagine a story! It's a blue cow story. Oh, I wanted a ballerina story. It's called Blue Cow Learns to Dance. In a field not far away is a herd of cows grazing quietly. 
One of the cows is most unusual. Blue cow wonders, wonders about the big world beyond her field. One day, Blue Cow was feeling very energetic. I wonder what it would be like to be able to dance. She's off again, said the other cows. So Blue Cow caught the bus that stops beside her field. I'd like a return ticket to somewhere I can dance, please. There you go, madam. Hold very tight. And they set off for the dance studio. Then they arrived. When Blue Cow got off the bus, she could hardly believe her eyes. Outside the dance studio was a beautiful ballerina. What a beautiful ballerina you are! I wonder, could you teach me how to dance? Blue Cow said hopefully. Oh, darling, but of course, said the ballerina. You will need some ballet shoes before I teach you to dance, and a tutu. Come with me. So Blue Cow followed the ballerina into the shoe shop. Goodness me, darling. You need four shoes. She found Blue Cow some shoes, and then she was ready to dance. So, to the music, they danced away, and the ballerina showed Blue Cow all the moves. Darling, you are wonderful," said the ballerina. "Dance with me in the Royal Ballet concert tonight." Moo! Yes, please," said Blue Cow. So that night they danced and danced for the crowds of people who came to see them, and they clapped and cheered, and Blue Cow felt like a proper ballerina. Oh, wait till I tell you the cows about this. You'll never guess where I've been. Where have you been? I've been ballet dancing. I danced to the concert at the Royal Ballet. Everyone knows cows can't dance, but we know they can, don't we? <laughs> she did look funny in that tutu,、mm. um, but she was very good. Um, nearly as good as me. <laughs> There's loads of music on this, you know.、Uh, this is my favourite.、Oh. <laughs> I know. Why don't we put it into the story machine and make a story? <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> Are you ready with the magic ingredient? Imagination. Imagine. Imagine. Imagine a story. Barnacle Rock story, and it's called Karaoke. Once upon a tide at Barnacle Rock, Electra sounded a shark alert. Oh, 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 shark alert! Everybody hide! Shark alert! She shouted. Nobble and gobble! Nobble and gobble! Cried the barnacles. All the sea creatures hid, but there was no sign of a shark. Well, well I, I think it was a shark," whispered Electra. "But it wasn't moving, and, and it did have rather a lot of white teeth." "Hmm. Let's take a look," suggested Popper Clam. "It's over there on the seabed," whispered Electra. "It does have rather a lot of teeth." Ellie didn't want to get too close. "A shark?" Popper Clam guffawed. <laughs> "That's no shark. False alarm, everyone. False alarm." The sea creatures were still a little scared. Well, what is it then? Electra hissed. Now let me see.、Uh, mm, uh, it's one of those.、Uh, Popper Clam paused for a moment. <laughs> it's a keyboard. Yes, that's what it is.、Oh. What does it do? Ellie asked, floating closer. Well, my girl, it makes lots of musical sounds. It does. Mm, but it won't work without electricity. Oh, then I suppose you'll be needing me," smiled Electra, suddenly looking very sparky. Stand back, everyone! Electra sent an electrical charge into the keyboard. It played a little musical tune. 
Isn't it lovely? Chimed the barnacles. If you push one of those buttons, it should play some more tunes, said Papa Clam. Graff the pufferfish appeared from behind his slimy rock. What's all this noise and kerfuffle? He grumbled. We've, We've got, got a keyboard, Graff, chimed the barnacles. A keyboard? exclaimed Gruff. Hey, why don't we do our favourite thing? sparked Electra. Yes, yes, cried Gruff. Let's have a karaoke night. Hey, Mr. Keyboard, play our favourite song, called Harry. The keyboard started to play and everyone began to sing. Half a pan of company rice, half a pan of treacle. That's the way the money goes. Pop goes the weasel. Half a pound of company rice, half a pound of treacle. That's the way the money goes. Pop goes the weasel. All the sea creatures spent the rest of the day singing and dancing. That's the way the money goes. Pop goes the weasel. <laughs> you see, that machine could make lots of noises, even one big enough to scare a shark away. I'll say. <laughs> well, all this music and dancing has made me really tired. Mm. I agree wholeheartedly. Oh, <gasps> it's time for us to hide. Mm. Indeed, the dawn is upon us, the morning is nigh. We've made our stories, and we bid you goodbye. <laughs> Story makers, working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers, stories are fabulous. Stories are happy. Bye, story makers. Story makers. See you again soon.